Hi everyone, as some of you know, one of my biggest gripes with Tesla Model 3 and Model Y is that they lack the display behind the steering wheel for the driver. Today I'm going to be testing a product sent to me by TestLogic, which allows me to use my phone as a display for various information from your car, including the speed, navigation, and a few other cool features. I'll be showing you guys how to install this into your own Tesla, as well as show you how to install the app and do a quick review after we take it onto the road. I'm on my way to our class where Yasha will be helping me in case I'm unable to complete all the steps, which seem pretty straightforward. Um, you need to remove a few panels from the passenger door side and uh, disconnect something and connect the test logic in its place. It looks pretty simple, but I'd like to have a professional on standby because we're going on a road trip tomorrow. Be sure to subscribe and watch that video where I talk about my nearly six months review of this car. If you have been following my channel, thank you for all the support. I'm super grateful for this great community we've created on this channel. And remember to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Okay, so we have now arrived at our class and I'm gonna open the package. This is what the package looks like. So TestLogic has sent me two pieces. I think this is the this this is the wireless MagSafe charger. So there's an option where it just comes with this without the MagSafe charger. The MagSafe charger is quite convenient because when your when your phone is mounted here, it can charge while it's being the display. And what's nice about this charger, better than the Tesla one, is that on the Tesla doesn't have any vents so if this is mounted here I'll show you guys later it would be vented because the vents would be right behind the phone so your phone wouldn't overheat so this is pretty cool you can actually use the Apple charger because it looks exactly the same but let me show you guys what this one looks like so in here there's a warning telling you how to remove the phone from the holder to always slide it up and not just pull directly off and here is some USB L shaped cables so if you have car with a regular USB A port it's got an adapter for USB C and an L shaped adapter for um, USB C so when you read the cable through the car it can be plugged in flush so it doesn't have to have the cable sticking out and this is the wireless charger so it looks just like the the MagSafe charger from Apple um, but this one is black so if you want to use the MagSafe charger and you have one already, which I actually do, but basically if you don't have one from Apple already, you can always use this one. And basically this mounts onto the mount that comes in here. So this is the main box where the test logic is. If you look at the box, it's a very slick design. And it says here, let's make Tesla better. Let's make Tesla even better. So obviously it's really good. And here are the step. You connect the transmitter, you run the app, and then you can turn your phone into convenient and functional dashboard that you've been missing so much. I definitely have been missing this. I wouldn't have bought this, um, to be fair. I usually like things stock, but generally speaking, like, you know, some of these third party accessories that I've used so far, I've been pretty impressed with, like the Yeslack mats that I reviewed the other day. And with the TestLogic, if you wanna get one of these, you can get 10% off if you use my referral code, which is European and Tesla, or just click in the link in the description below to order yours now if you like what you see here. So what it comes with, it's a very slick box actually. So there's a there's a QR code to download the app. It's obviously um, takes you to the relevant um, app store link or the Play Store link if you're on Android. And there's a box like this. This will be mounted. I think it connects to your ECU basically. Maybe ECU is not the right word, the computer of your car and there's a there's a switch here this is active control on and off that's a switch that you can turn on and off inside here i think this is for if you want to leave it plugged in but then turn it off there's a slider inside this gap i don't know if you can see that and the other thing that is included is this really slick looking mount so what this is is this gets stuck over here oh, sorry on your steering column and then basically when your phone is there, what's nice about this is that it's always visible no matter how you orient your steering wheel. Because for example, if I move my steering wheel up or down, you can see that this stays on the steering column. So it doesn't move out of place. And then also if I move it in and out. So if you have multiple drivers, this is perfect because it doesn't actually mount on the dash, it mounts on the steering column itself. So when it moves up and down, you'll always have visibility through the top cavity of the steering wheel. So what else do we have in this box? 
So just remove the foam piece and then a, a cardboard separator. We have a plastic pry tool so you don't break anything when you open up your car. Then we have this connector. I think this is a splitter. So this connects into your car and then uh, connects into the test logic. Um, I think over here. So basically this would be um, splitting out whatever it needs from the data feed. So there's the small cable from the test logic and then these are the connectors that go into the car. And then you have more stickers. So let's say you stuck this on and you ripped it off, but then you need to reapply the stickers. They actually include extra ones, which is really nice of them. And um, finally, nothing else in here. They have a mounting ring. So they have this uh, magnetic disc. So if you didn't get the one with the charger, you would actually stick this metal magnetic disc onto here. So then just align it nicely so that it says take to test logic. And then um, this would connect to your iPhone. So let me show you. So I've got MagSafe on my iPhone. This connects perfectly. So I actually don't need to stick anything on my phone. So if you have the MagSafe iPhones, uh, you should be fine. You don't need to stick anything else. But if you don't have the MagSafe iPhone, or you have an Android, or you have an old iPhone, it comes with this magnetic mounting ring which you can stick onto either your phone or the case of your phone and this obviously sticks onto here i'm not going to align it because it was very difficult to separate um obviously without any leverage so that's what's included i'm not going to be using this ring and i'm not going to be using this mount because i'll be sticking charger that came with this package and i'll be charging my phone when i use it so without further ado i'm gonna start installing it i'm gonna show you guys what you need to do in your car to get this installed and what the step setup steps are okay what you want to do is get in the passenger seat because the panel that you need to remove is on this side and you actually need to turn off your car so basically you go to options and the safety you go power off and the car will be um, turned off completely so once the car's off, everything's going to be off in the car. You step on the brake to reactivate the car. Step one. So the first step is to remove these seals. You don't need to use the pry tool. And basically there's a section that's attached. Do not remove that section. This removal of the seal is pretty easy. You just pull. Don't remove that section that's connected. Then the second part, we actually forgot to open the glove compartment. So I opened it. Make sure yours is open for this. You prime this panel off. There's a few clips in here. Francisco is helping me with this because I'm usually pretty clumsy and I tend to break clips. But these clips were very strong, I found, and it's probably impossible to break them that easily with the pry tool. The next step is to remove this plastic fastener. Use the pry tool to not lose it, put it on the side. And what you want to do is access the cables behind the second panel that you're trying to remove. I was trying to see if I can get away without removing it fully, but it's actually impossible. So um, remember to remove your floor mats because I've got these big yes like floor mats. So remove that to get that out of the way and you can remove the whole second panel. And this one's pretty easy to remove. It's got the same clips as before, but because it's got more leverage, you can pull it out pretty easily. Once this is completely removed, you'll see that the cables are exposed. The first step is to actually disconnect the power cable i think it's auxiliary power and it's quite difficult so use the prior tool to unclip it and plug in the y splitter that comes with the test logic this big part connects into the big port for um, information from the computer and ecu and then this last small connector connects into the test logic it's pretty straightforward once you've done that you want to put the test logic in an open gap inside the cavity of the car just hide it in the gap somewhere and then the reversal of how to disassemble is the reassembly process so just put everything back in make sure that all the clips are clipped push everything in nicely and remember to open your glove compartment again i actually forgot to do that once again so this time i didn't turn the car back off because no cables or electricals were exposed so i thought it was pretty safe so we just put this final panel back it's tricky to get it aligned, but it clips in pretty well. And once it's clipped in properly, there shouldn't be any gaps. Then put back the seals, make sure everything's fitting snug. And that's the end of the installation. Now that we've installed the TestLogic um, control unit, um, I need to go download the app. There's a link in here, so you don't need to search for it on the App Store. And basically, it'll take you to the actual uh, device. I double tap to install. Obviously, on Android, just follow the instructions as well. 
So you can ask me to use the Bluetooth device, transmitter found, connecting the device, and there, there it is. You, I don't really need to do anything. Let me put my car into reverse. You see it shows up immediately. Back into park. No problems. And there's different views as well. There's a Google Maps view. And also there's some really cool new features now. It actually has the blind spot indicator. So it starts showing on the side if there's a blind spot as well. So let me see if I put the indicator on. You can also see indication on each side. This is really cool guys um so basically it also shows you how much energy is being consumed and how much range you have left in your car so if you like this product remember to use my referral code i'm going to mount this on my i'm going to stick this down now so make sure this this part is clean so i'm going to make sure that it's in a in a good location so it looks like it's around about here i'm going to make sure that you clean the top properly before you mount this so you remove the 3m Okay, it's a really nice sticky putty looking thing. So I want to make sure that it's straight. It's a little bit permeable when it's on. But you just push it. Okay, I'm pushing it down. What's nice about this is you don't need to drill any holes or cause any damage to your bodywork in your Tesla, in your brand new Tesla, if you've got a brand new Tesla. And basically, this would be able to um, hold your phone over here. I don't have my... Um, Apple MagSafe one here at the moment. So I'm just going to stick the one that you receive from Test Logic. And basically, what they actually recommend is that you route this cable around here, around the sides, actually within the paneling here, and stick it in the chargers in the back seat. So this USB port goes into the port in the back, and you plug the L shaped thing in, and you plug this to the side so that it's this gets rooted around here so it's never in the way of the driver so then when i mount my phone you'll see that it sticks to my phone very well because it's magsafe Wait, I'm sorry the wrong way magsafe and then this gets stuck here so basically it stays here oh yes actually you route the cable through this hole so it's pretty neat and basically i would then i would then stick this onto here so remember that it comes with extra adhesive if you mess it up so you can always um reapply and readjust so let me stick this on now so this this matte side is the side that has actually got the magnetic the metal side actually needs to be stuck onto the 3m so i'm just going to make sure that this is um nice and straight remove the 3m um adhesive cover and you make sure that it's straight Stick it on tightly. I'll make sure that this stays on. So it doesn't look bad at all because it actually looks like just a, you know, a phone holder over here. This cable, I can plug it in to the middle here, to the charger inside here, or I can route this cable through to the back, by the back seats. And as you can see over here, there's the USB cable, the USB ports on the bottom here. So if I plug this in over here, then when I plug my phone in, it will start charging. So take a look here. Yes, and then this is my boyfriend. I think I've stuck this too low now. Yeah, I've kind of messed it up. I stuck this too low. So guys, don't make the same mistake that I made. Make sure that you actually stick this MagSafe thing slightly higher. And luckily it comes with a more decent. Yeah, luckily it does because this is actually stuck on pretty heavy. Okay, stick, you want to stick it actually higher? So what you, I've got the Max, the Pro Max, so maybe that's also a challenge. So stick it a little bit higher. Make sure that the phone can actually stay in here. Yes, perfect. And then um, I'm going to stick this a little bit lower. Maybe over here. I, think I might have to stick, restick this whole thing, but that's also okay. And as you can see, you, the new iOS is actually um, desktop mode. So I can actually unlock my phone now. It's my boy Finley. So if I open the TestLogic app, I just put my phone over here. It starts charging my phone and I have the display right behind the steering wheel. We have all the indication that we need. We have, if I put the hazards on, you can see the hazards are showing over there. And um, if I put it into reverse, you can see that the reverse um, starts coming up. It's, it's much better because I don't have to look to the right to see the speed and the speed is always showing in the middle here. It works just like a um, display that's behind the steering wheel 
and basically it, because it's mounted on the steering rack over here it doesn't get obstructed um, if, even if you move the, the steering wheel up and down but you can see it shows the speed I'm currently navigating to the supercharger because tomorrow we're heading up to Porto um, which is about 550 kilometers away and I'll be doing another video on that as well as a review on my almost six months experience with this car so I'm probably going to use this a little bit probably not too much because I need uh, to use my phone to film um, right now I only have one angle because I'm using my phone oh, what's nice is it also shows the speed limit so instead of looking all the way to the right you can actually see it over here so that's pretty useful um, but you can see that when you put the indicators on it shows you which side you're indicating and let's see what happens when you put autopilot on autopilot on I can change the speed it'll show the same display over there as well which is pretty cool and it shows how many watt hours per kilometer live so that's actually not a display that you can have over here on the on the car which is pretty cool and yeah I guess this is also quite nice because every time it warns me to nudge the wheel I can actually see it immediately directly in front of me now because oftentimes um, it asks me to nudge the wheel but I can't actually see to the side you know obviously you're supposed to put your eyes on the road but then you look on the screen and then you get striked out so um, this is ideal because I won't take my eyes off the front of the car hopefully this will improve my autopilot experience a little bit as you can see it's the horrible weather in the whole of Portugal including here in the Algarve um, it's actually been flooding in some parts of Portugal this is actually very uncommon here but apparently this is the last of it the Algarvians have been telling us that you know in March is probably the final month where you get rain and then um, April May onwards it starts getting dry and pretty hot what I do like though is that my phone's currently being charged and it's not overheating because obviously uh, the vent is right there so now it's like hitting straight onto the phone I guess one thing is that it's actually obstructing the air coming to my face so that is a negative I would say about this um, if you need the air blasting in your face personally I don't like the air blasting in my face so I don't care too much about that but that's something to be mindful of if you have the test logic mounted on your on your front dash so you can scroll and then there's Google Maps so this maps isn't the same maps as the one that's on your Tesla it's actually Google Maps so if you navigate on Google Maps you can use that instead of the Tesla one I personally quite like the Tesla one because it does you know um, energy prediction and stuff for you as well and those are the two screens at the moment but I actually just discovered that there's more information on the test logic app I'm actually currently charging at the superchargers but if you scroll left it actually shows you how much you're charging and how much power is coming out of the supercharger it's the same display over here anyways we're currently splitting with the model s next to me there's the v3 chargers here so they split between uh, a and b and it shows what's also using the power as well so it can tell you you know if i can turn off something to speed up the charging and there's actually more information if you turn left you can keep scrolling left i only scrolled once right but you can either have this view you can i don't know if this view is available when you're driving you can have this view to show g-forces and uh, other stuff as well and then you can see just general information about the car you can also turn the sh different shortcuts on so these shortcuts i'll link uh, the websites on test logic so there's some cool stuff that you can do so for example you can have your car on chill and if you have chill kickdown enabled if you accelerate all the way to the end for one second it disables chill mode so that your car goes into regular mode and then reactivates chill mo mode again so there's some really cool features on this setting you can change what screens you want to display in what order i think i can change the order yes i can change the order you can update the transmitter software to the latest firmware so right now oh the firmware in mine is version 7 it's actually version 15 i'm going to do the update now and see what that looks like and there's blind spot monitoring using parking sensors for blind spot mon monitoring speed limit warning let me just do the update let's see how long the update takes well that seems to be pretty quick okay so I'll put this back here so it can update by itself I must say the only uh, concern I have is I think 
uh, TestLogic haven't created a new mount for this um, steering column in the new Model 3 because it's not actually flush. The base of this um, stand is completely flat, whereas on the model, the new Model 3, it's a, little, it's a little bit curved, so it's not sticking on properly. I could use the other sticky tape so that it's double and it's thicker um, and it has more surface area, but I think it's not very stable to be honest. So every time I take it off, I just hold, I just hold down the base to make sure it doesn't come out. It doesn't look too bad when the phone's not there. It looks like a little round thing <laughs> sticking out over there. Oh, my car was actually born on the 21st of September and was built in Giga Factory Shanghai. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe. Remember, if you'd like to get yourself a Tesla logic and get 10% off your order, remember to use my coupon code, link in the description below. Thank you for watching and see you guys again next time.